Scammers Exposed on Hardcore Pawn, Part 3. Excuse me, what's going on? Uh, I, I lost my ring over here. I was going to pawn it. You lost your ring? It's right here somewhere. Hey, right. why would it be it. in the couch? It no, says I, do I not. Sat, no, I had sat right here. The following customer attempt to trick the shop with this pretty creative tactic. The customer starts going crazy on the couches and claims that he was looking for a ring that he supposedly lost while sitting on the couch. The staff was rightfully skeptical about this. This isn't the first time that I've seen one of these scams. He's making up the story, so we give him a free ring. You need to let go of our merchandise. Back off the furniture. Back off the furniture. Oh, 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 oh. What kind of ring was it? It was a gold diamond ring. I just come on. A ladies' on. ring? It was in my pocket. It was in your pocket. But I sat on that sofa. Your sofa took my ring. Our sofa took this. your ring? Yeah, what the Seth rightfully confronted this customer for his disruptive behavior. And thanks to his extensive experience, he knew this customer was trying to cheat the store. As Seth was escorting him out the store, the customer literally went crazy. Come on, man! I can't go home without this damn ring, man! Come on! Man, man. I can't go home to my girl without this damn ring, man! If you ain't gonna give me the ring, I don't wanna f you, bitch! Are you crying? Coat scam. The following customer enters the pawn shop and claims that his wife brought his coat to the pawn shop and was now trying to get it back. He points to one coat in particular, and it is at this point Seth knew he was scamming. Where's your wife's ticket? She didn't want to give it to me. She didn't want to give it to you? No. So what do you want us to do, just give you the coat back? No, I just want to give you the money that you, you guys pay her How for. How much did we give her? Uh, I believe it was like $100. How do you, you believe know? that? That's what I was told. The coat did not fit the customer at all, and coupled with the fact that he doesn't even have a ticket for this transaction, Seth and Bobby J both knew this customer was just yapping. You're full of what do you say? Oh, you told me I'm full of Yes. I don't believe you. Look at the coat. You're swimming in it. This guy looks like a gopher wearing a bear coat. He knew it wasn't his. The staff finally had enough of this insufferable customer and gave them a piece of their minds. Nothing this customer said came across as genuine, and he also got to have some of the worst acting in history. He then started to raise his voice. you got bigger problems than this coat if your wife's stealing your well, you know what? Forget it, man. I'm out of here. Thank you. Let me tell you something. What? Don't you touch me there, dude. Don't touch me. Damn it. Hey, don't you ever come back to that place. Thanks. Fake box. The following customer enters the pawn shop with what's supposedly a over 100-year-old cigarette box. It only took a couple seconds for Les to know that this was not true at all. When Les called out the customer, she was in denial. This is a 100-year-old cigarette box. Actually, this isn't even close to 100-year-old. See these hinges here? Mm -hmm. They didn't make this kind of stuff 100 years ago. What are you talking about? It's not old. How old? It's not old. The customer was beyond shocked when Les told her the bad news. She also brought in a diamond ring that she was looking to get money for. Les attempted to help this customer out, but she just wouldn't cooperate. It How much would you like? $4,000. How much can I get for it? How much would you like? Thank you. You're welcome. Sure. You're a business person. I'm a business person. And this is, a, this is a treatment that I get for coming to your business. I'll never come here again. And that's what you get when you don't know what you have. The sob story. People go through extreme lengths to get a quick buck out of the store and sometimes go a bit too far. This next customer enters the pawn shop with an extremely sad story as she claims both her grandmother and mother passed away. I'm trying to pawn my ring. Sure. How much are you looking for? 200. It's got an old diamond in it. I know. It was from my great-grandmother. Really? When she died. She gave it to my mom, and my mom okay. just died, and she left it for me. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. She went to the doctor because her stomach was hurting. Uh -huh. Apparently, her mother passed away due to stomach issues and right before gave her this ring. When Les inspected the ring, he found many issues with it, and it sadly wasn't worth much. However, he still showed compassion for the customer. How about 125? And I just feel bad. That's, I mean, you know, normally I'd go even less. I, but... I got been in a car accident in 05, and I haven't been working. Because of the story, I go 150. Have you ever done a loan here before? My friend has. You have never pawned anything else? You sold us anything? The customer's story just kept on going as she claims she lost her job and was even in a car accident. She also claims she never ever did business at the pawn shop. Seth quickly checked the store records and sure enough, the customer was lying. People are full of 
Um, people tell us so many stories. It's really hard to believe anything people tell us. Even this woman with the ring about her dead mom who said she never pawned anything here before. We looked up her account. She pawned 33 different things in the past. Times are so hard, you know. I can only pray. Designer bags. The following customer enters the pawn shop with what she claims are designer bags worth a ton of money. The customer would receive some extremely disappointing news shortly after Ashley took a quick look at these bags. We're a designer bags in a microwave. I like having designer bags because they look good. They feel good. I like having them. But now that I'm moving, I just decided to try to come in and sell them. What are we looking to do? I can get maybe five or six hundred for all these bags in this microwave. All right. I'm not sure if you know this, but this is not real. The customer was in denial and couldn't believe that her bags were fake. Ashley noted that the material of the bag was off and the stitching did not match the original. The customer would then attempt to provide an explanation for everything Ashley said. It should be darker and the zipper should not be worn out. What if it been zipped a couple of times, like more than normal? It wouldn't do that. The purse was as fake as fake can be. Totally different linings. It looked like it was painted around the edges, a totally different color. The zipper was all worn. Okay, we'll take this out of the group. The customer also had another bag with her, but this time it looked like it could be authentic. When Ashley took a closer look at this bag, she found tons of damage and tears on it that decreased its price a substantial amount. I have so many of these purses right now for sale that what you're asking, I'm, I'm asking lower prices. I mean, I sell them for like under 100. Oh, do? Oh, I don't know. So what'll help you out under 100? You tell me. 99. <laughs> tell me a price, what can you do? Just honestly, like what exactly can you do? The MILF. The following customer enters the pawn shop looking to pawn a TV. This TV was old, worn down and beat up, but she still had high expectations. When she was asked where her receipt was, the customer blanked out. You bought this from here? Yes. You got your receipt? Excuse me. You can barely see it. Look how blurry it is. There's a little section in so that's clear. I'm coming back to get it. What you trying to get? I paid 200 for them. They told me I can get at least a third. And you paid 200 for this? Yes. The customer claimed that she paid 200 bucks for this TV, but it wouldn't surprise me if this was a lie. Les understands that people come to the pawn shop in a state of stress, which explains why the customer went crazy after she got an offer. $15. Yeah. That's an insult. It's a difficult thing pawning because they need the money. That ain't right. Y'all robbing us. We ain't robbing us. It still is. That's not fair. So I can't get $50 for my TV. $15. What we gonna do with $15? I got two bags. That's McDonald's money right there. Fake ID. The following customer goes to one of the shop windows and claims that he had a laptop in pawn. When Les looked him up in the system, he was nowhere to be found. When asked for an ID, the customer gave Les a driver's license. You have nothing in pawn under your name. You got ID? Show me. Gentleman comes in to take out a computer. We have to check your identification and compare it to the identification you gave us when you pawned it. Here was a guy that proceeded to hand me a driver's license, which had a different picture than the driver's license that was on his ticket. The customer gave Les a driver's license that didn't have his name nor face on it. It turns out he was attempting to do business under another person's name, which in no world is ever allowed. The customer tried to downplay the situation, but it wasn't going to work on Les. The guy that came to pick up this item wasn't the guy that pawned it. It was his brother. They're serious. Huh? It's serious. You put your picture on his ID. You're dealing under his name. Because I wanted to get the same price. They was going to give me a different price. So in order to get the same price, I told him I was him. That is illegal in the state of Michigan to change the picture on an ID. The customer didn't have any valid reasons for doing what he did. And Les was beyond frustrated at this customer's lack of consideration and common sense. When the customer's brother showed up, he got very disrespectful. Working, I'm not swearing at you. Whatever, you act like a motherfucker. Get the out. You get out. I don't want to deal with you. Get out. Even though the customer got caught, he just couldn't accept it and insisted that Les do business with them. Les didn't let these scammers get their way and rightfully told him to leave the premises. These customers were extremely disrespectful to Les. Get the f out. We run a legitimate operation. Don't come in trying to f us with the wrong kind of ID. It's not legal. This guy tried to be a big shot, you know, making a lot of noise. I don't give a how big you are. I'm in your face. Ring scammer. 
The following customer enters the pawn shop and claims she brought her ring to the pawn shop the day before to get it cleaned. I don't know about you, but this just seemed like a total lie as the shop never charges money for ring cleaning services. Hi, boy. Hi. Brought my ring in to have it cleaned. I picked it up yesterday just before you got ready to close. Well, you got it cleaned. They charged me seven, $65. To clean your ring? To clean my ring. Baloney. No, it's not baloney. I don't have my receipt, but you can check the computer for my name. Les didn't hesitate to call out this customer for her blatant lies. She claims that she got the wrong ring back from the shop and was now demanding the shop to give her the proper ring. Things really went downhill when she started raising her voice at Les. Ma'am, let you me can tell check you your something. Computer. They don't even fit my finger. This is not my mother ring. Did you, was it in an envelope? Yes, it was in a brown envelope. Show me the you. envelope. I didn't bring it with me. When somebody comes in and gets something clean, we don't put it in an envelope. Go that, get that, it. That, that, that Go get it. I'll give you $1,000. No, 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 the customer had literally no evidence to prove that she got her ring cleaned at the shop. Les calmly tried to explain to the customer that the shop doesn't charge for ring cleaning, but she just wasn't listening. The customer kept on demanding to get her ring back. I travel on a bus, okay? Then you can pay your bus transportation when you go back and come back and get the thousand dollars. No, no, I don't want the thousand dollars. I want my mother ring. Let me be perfectly honest with you. I'm going to do nothing for you unless you get Oh, you're going to do something. I'm not leaving this place. The customer was so obviously lying as the shop doesn't even use envelopes for ring cleanings, which just proves she was a liar and a scammer. Eventually, Les had enough of her disruptive behavior and promptly kicked her out, but she did something crazy before she left. I'm not doing a mother thing till I get my okay, damn ring. Okay, it's time to leave. All right, here, come out with me. Let's deal with you over here. Come out with me. That's all right, that's all right. I'll be back. We'll be here. I'll be back. You know what? Y'all can kiss my ass, mother Oh, my God. TV picture. The following scammer truly lacked common sense with this scheme they attempted to pull. The customer claims they have a 60-inch TV but weren't able to bring it to the store because it was too big. Right from the start, Seth knew this was very fishy. I got a 60-inch TV. It's too big for me to load it up here. They told me I could bring a picture in, try to get some money for it. It got HDMI, all that on it. Can I get an estimate? I can't get an estimate or... So anywhere from zero to 250. You gotta bring it in. To make matters worse, the customer claimed one of the shop employees instructed him to bring a picture of the item instead of bringing it in. This was definitely a lie, as no shop employee is clumsy enough to ever allow such activity to happen. What you're saying is basically you're wasting my time for me coming up here. Gas like 359, man. You're going to basically, I got to come all the way here. How, how far away do you live? I live in Dearborn. Okay, so yeah, about 359, 16 miles. Look, man, tell me not, bitch, man. Real talk, man. The customer couldn't just take the loss and go home and started to be extremely disrespectful towards Seth, who was just trying to help him. The customer attempted to guilt trip Seth, but eventually Seth got the security to deal with this weirdo. You waste my time coming up in here. I keep it real in Detroit all day. Real talk. My shit is I want to know what I can get for my TV. I told you. You know what, dog, man? Dog. Don't touch me, dog. Don't touch me, dog. Man, for real, this is you getting my stuff, bro. I ain't serious, dog, man. Get on me. Get on me. I'm telling you for real, man. This full-grown adult unironically threw a tantrum in the middle of the shop after he did not get his way. He started to throw things around the shop, and even when the security got him out of the shop, he still continued to be a nuisance and cause problems. You keep throwing a fit, we're throwing your ass out. Y'all want to treat me like trash? Y'all want to treat me like trash? I'm going to throw this bitch in the garbage bin, huh? Ow. I got tired just from watching them. I almost have a season just having popcorn and just enjoyed the show. Oh, okay. Oh. 